This is Mark and Victor. They were shooting hoops, and I was able to speak to them individually, separately, away from each other. Uh, Victor was very animated, very sanguine, and Mark was an accountant and very phlegmatic. That is, I couldn't tell if he was listening to me and thought I was an idiot or he was taking in what I was saying. But it's very important never to go by your feelings or even what you see. In John chapter 3, Jesus said, The Spirit of God is like the wind. You can't tell where the wind's coming from, where it's going to. It's the same with the Spirit of God. So you just don't know what's going to happen. One thing you do know is that God's Word doesn't return void and your labor is never in vain. Do you think there's an afterlife? Uh, yeah. Yeah, do you think about it much? I prefer not to think about it too much. Are you afraid of dying? Oh man, it freaks me out. You know, the biggest moment in your life will be your death, do you know that? Yeah. Because you're going to find out if there's a heaven and a hell. <laughs> so it scares you? A little bit, yeah. A little bit? A little bit. A little big bit. bit. A big bit. <laughs> you know, the Bible says it actually haunts us every day of our lives. And it's so true. Now, why would you be scared of death? I don't know. Just the unknownness of it? Yeah. It's like stepping off a cliff in, in complete <laughs> darkness, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> do, you know, do you know what the cause of death is? I don't mean like a car accident. I mean, why is everyone going to why is everyone gonna die? Do you know what the Bible says? No, I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, it says it's wages. <laughs> the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Now, do you think you've earned your wages? Are you worthy of death? <laughs> oh, right, See, right, I'm right. I'm trying to get you to quit before payday. Oh. I want, you, <laughs> I want you to turn from sin before the day of judgment. Oh, so right. let's see if you've earned your wages. Do you think you're a good person? Yeah. How many lies have you told in your life? Oh, man. A lot. <laughs> I that, couldn't give you a number. I couldn't give you a number. Ever stolen something? Yes. Ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Uh, Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Oh, man. I'd be lied to you if I said I didn't. <laughs> have you had sex out of marriage? I have. So here's a little summation, Victor. Okay. I'm not judging you, but you've just told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, a fornicator, and an adulterer at heart. Oh, man. <laughs> so you've earned your wages. Oh, man. That sounds bad altogether like that. <laughs> it all comes out on Judgment Day. Are you going to be innocent or guilty? Oh, guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell, I guess. Now you've got a reason to be scared of death. You know, it's God's, God's placed a judgment on you for your crimes against Him, and it's the death sentence. And after death, the judgment, and the scriptures say, all liars are their part in the lake of fire. So this is a really scary thing because God's nothing like us. He's absolutely holy, moral perfection and thought, word, and deed. And every time you sin, you store up His wrath, like an LA freeway chase. You know, guys getting away from the police and... The helicopter pilot saying, what's wrong with this guy? He can't get away from the law. He's making it worse for himself. And you can't get away from God. The eye of the Lord is in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And he's going to bring every work to judgment, including every secret thing, whether it is good or evil. What can you do to be made right with God, Victor? Tell me. I don't, man, I hope maybe turn everything around, stop the lying, stop the blasphemy. Now, is that going to help anything? It's like saying to a judge, judge, you robbed the bank, but I won't do it ever again. <laughs> He's, oh, he's not going to say, oh, you'll never do it again? Oh, that's great. You, you can, can go. go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so you're right. You're right. In the jail. So what can you do? I don't know. Now, does that concern you? A little. See, at the moment, things aren't balancing. You're an accountant, and you can't adjust these books to make them balance. How can there be equity between you and God? Any idea? What can you do to make things right? Because at the moment, you're in debt to the law. God's wrath abides upon you because you've broken his commandments. You're like a criminal standing before a good judge and you've broken the law and the judge is bound to give you justice because he's good. And that brings you to the point of the gospel. God did something for humanity. God became a human being 2,000 years ago. And when Jesus died on the cross, he suffered for the sin of the world. Now you probably know that, but you may not know this aspect. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. If you're in court and someone pays the fine, the judge can let you go. He can say, Victor's guilty, but someone's paid his fine. He's out of here. And God can acquit you from the courtroom of eternal justice because of what Jesus did on the cross. Just before he died, he cried out, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. That means your case can be dismissed. God can commute your death sentence. That is, let you live forever because he's rich in mercy because of the death and resurrection of a savior. And the miracle, Victor, is that at the moment, you love to sin. You enjoy pornography, fornication, all these things are exciting to you. 
The miracle of conversion when you're born again is that God will give you a new heart with new desires so you thirst for righteousness, something which is radically foreign for a sin-loving sinner. You'll want to do that which is right. Okay. It's a miracle. Yeah. You know, and when you're a Christian, you don't do that which is right to earn heaven. You've already got it. You do it because you're grateful to God for his mercy. Does this make sense? Yeah. What you have to do is repent and trust in him. Now, do you think I'm telling the truth? Yeah. The, the way to get right with God, to find everlasting life, is to repent of your sins. Not just confess them to a priest, but go straight to God. Mm -hmm. And then trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. At the moment, you're trusting in your goodness to save you. You're like a man who's on the edge of a plane, and his plane has jumped 10,000 feet, and he's going to save himself by flapping his arms. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to work. He's got to trust the parachute. Oh, man, yeah. So what you've got to do is transfer your trust from yourself, because that's not going to work, mm. to the Savior. That's going to work because he took your punishment upon himself. Does this all make sense? Yes. So Victor, you want to have a victory over death. Your name Victor means victory. That's where it's probably from. And you want to have victory over death and that's what you can have in Christ. So at the moment you're heading for hell, there are two things you must do to be saved. You must repent and trust in Jesus. When are you going to do that? Right now. Are you serious? Serious. Can I pray with you? Sure. Really quick, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel where we post two new encouraging videos every single day. We also have many more resources available on livingwaters.com. Thank you so much. Examine my motives. I'm only talking to you because I love you, I care about you, and I'm horrified at the thought of you ending up in hell, with death seizing upon you and dragging you before the judge of the universe to answer for your crimes against this law and ending up in God's prison. It's a place without parole and I'd hate that to happen to you. So I'd really like you to think about it with, with tremendous sobriety in your heart. Can you do that? Yeah.